Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Java Chat. I have a friend returning to hang out with me, a gentleman by the name of Richard Krawczyk. Uh, for those of you watching on YouTube, yeah, these are virtual backgrounds. They're freaking cool. I mean, I'm up in the space station, he's down on the beach. Where else can you possibly have such a cool kind of interview, right? Uh, and in actuality, I have nothing behind me, so it's, it's not good. But we both have our coffee. Um, I'm not in weightlessness. We have virtual gravity here, so it'll be no, nothing floating. At least I don't think. Truth that you're in a world all by yourself, you know? Uh, <laughs> in course. your world, we're just living in it. I'm completely off the planet, bro. I'm just, I'm, I'm gone. There's, you know, rocker and everything. So. <laughs> well, I'm literally about less than a block from the beach right now in Venice Beach. Oh, that's right. You're, you're down in L.A. Well, you're in L.A. County, I should say. So it's, it's, uh, it's been an interesting time for us here in the U.S., hasn't it? That's what they say. <laughs> um, we, we've been, we've been um, going back and forth, me and a whole bunch of people, about this whole pandemic thing. And one of the, one of the reasons that I asked you to come back, one, is to catch up. I haven't talked to you in a while. Um, and two is to see how people are, are dealing with this in different parts of the country. Um, I've got a few other people that are back on the East Coast and, and some, some of the Midwesterners. And one, how you been? The heck you been up to, dude? You've been like missing. You've been MIA. What's going on? I haven't been missing. I'm all over social media, dude. Oh, then, then, then I got to get something because your stuff's not showing up on my feeds. And that's unusual because you usually do. Your like stuff is me, usually one. You have, you have to put me in the list of close friends. Then you'll... Then you'll go I thought you time. were. Doggone it. You know what? What That changes today. Damn it. I thought you were. Maybe you are. Maybe you aren't. I'll, I'll go look to make sure. But in any no, case. No, you just say I'm your close friend, but I'm actually not. That's what it is. What, a, what is this? Turning into a Don Rickles roast now? Says, Bob Newhart says, with, I've never met Bob Newhart. I have no idea who he is. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but, but seriously, what have you been up to, man? What's been going on? Dude, my business is booming. I bet. You're in the, you're in the one industry that's been going nuts. Yeah, because, um, I mean, I always say history likes to repeat itself. Mm -hmm. And the big hit that we all got was the, re the Great Recession from uh, 2007 to 2009. Yeah. A lot of business owners went into the little fetal position. Oh, yeah. And they're doing it again. And they're doing it again. <laughs> and that's the worst thing you could do. The oh, best yeah. thing you could do is just the opposite. If everybody else is doing this, you need to expand. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, so um, we're working with our clients, expanding their digital footprint and uh, creating actual value in the marketplace, not just, hey, buy my stuff at 50% off or 75% right. off. It's more like what's in it for the customer? What, you know, what value are you getting? Not a sales piece, but actual value itself. So we're doing quite well with that, actually, especially in the blockchain and crypto space. I, you know, what's really interesting to me is that you, you brought up a very, and I don't think anybody realizes that you just demonstrated how people are doing this. Yeah. They're throwing out discounts. They're throwing out buy one, get one. Why would you do that at a time like this? This is exactly the time that you should be proving your value. I mean, if your it, product well, or service I, I like is that good. I what we're going through right now, and not the great reset, another great recession or depression. I call it the great reset. Yeah. And what, I'm, and what I mean by that is if you look at even the price of oil. Oh, yeah. A bucket oh, of, yeah. A, a bucket of KFC chicken is more expensive than a, a barrel of oil right now. Isn't that amazing? Prices are dropping significantly. And basically, the stock market's resetting, uh, crypto's resetting, um, prices for everything are resetting, coming back down to reasonable levels. And the people that are in the fetal position that are just trying to hoard, those are the people that are going to be left behind. And the people that are really active in the reset, by the mm. time this thing ends, which is mm. one or two or three or 12 or whatever it is, right, right. they're just going to be superstars. I, I have to agree. I, I can tell you right now, um, the liquid part of my wallet is pretty empty, but I'll tell you what, it ain't empty because of any losses. It's empty because I've been throwing it back into the markets. And that's the whole point is, I mean, come on, if you didn't short wells, which I did miss, unfortunately, you missed out on a hell of a shot there. You missed out on Boeing. Boeing went from 350 down to 96. What? I mean, these are all great times to be getting vested in something where you can you can rebound very well. I mean, this is, this is the time to replan your future, if, if ever. I don't know if you can speak to that. Yeah. Um, Baron Nathan Rothschild mm -hmm. said many, many moons ago, you buy when there's blood in the streets. Yep. Now, I'm not saying that as to take advantage of people. Yeah. But when assets are depressed, and this is how Warren Buffett made a ton of money. Yes. Yep. He bought low. He bought established brands. He bought low. 
and he, you know, with, with different management, and then he just kind of, you know, ride the wave. Yeah. And so this is an opportunity for everybody to invest like Warren Buffett. Absolutely. And in, in fact, I've watched a couple of, and this is a good time to be playing around with penny stocks too, because when they do take off, even if they only move a little, there's a couple I've come across. They're doing very well. I've, I've made a bit of money on some of them. Let, let me, he's got, he's got no, okay, come on, bring it. <laughs> okay. Now I'm a former investment banker. Okay. I'm leading by that. Okay. Okay. Penny stocks can very easily be manipulated. Okay. <clears throat> Usually by is true. No, no, that's true. That's actually, that's, that's true. Yes. So whether it's a down market or an up market, these little penny stocks, a little bit of movement can be, oh my gosh, it just, you know, went up 350% in one day. Well, yeah, it went up a half a penny. Yeah. You know? so, so these can be very easily manipulated to go up. And then when it goes up and the people who bought it and then manipulated it, they're left, the people who now own the stock are going to be left holding the back. Right. They know where to sell the stock. Gotcha, gotcha. So if, if, if you made some money with that, that's more sheer luck than anything else. Okay. And the same thing goes with crypto, honestly. And there are a lot of crypto startups that are really, really good. There's some that are really, really bad. Um, and I'm, as you know, I'm pretty big in the, in the yep. crypto space. Yep. And those can very easily be, be manipulated too. And I'm just not into manipulating certain assets so I can make a quick buck because it's, I think, a karma. Yeah. If I'm making a quick buck, taking, taking advantage of people, then when the market bounces back, guess who they're always going to point their gun at? That, that would be a target on my back. And I certainly sure. don't want that. So um, you have to do things with integrity, with ethics. Uh, but you buy when there's blood in the streets. If there are undervalued assets, take advantage of them while you can. What would you suggest would be a good way to look at assets as plainly as possible without getting too technical? Because I'm sure there's a lot of people that are going to be listening to this going, oh, we're talking about that now. How does that work since you were an investment banker? What would be a good process of thought okay. uh, to get into something like that? Here's the easiest way of looking at it, the way the bank looks at it. Okay. 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 If, you, if you pay your mortgage on time, it's a performing asset. If you right. go into foreclosure or you're late, it's a non-performing. Non-performing, right. right. So what you want to do is invest money in performing assets, assets that you can actually get cash from. Now, your car is not considered an asset because as soon as you sign on the dotted line, exactly. for some cars, it loses 50% of the value. As right as out the gate. Yep. So always invest in cash flows. Okay. And if you can get the cash flow at a, at a you know, instead of 100 cents on the dollar, at, at 50 or even 75 <clears> cents on the dollar, and, and right now we're seeing assets are, you know, 80, 90 cents on the dollar. Yeah. Uh, off, I'm sorry, yeah. 10 to 20 cents on the dollar. We yep. get getting dirt cheap. If you're cash flush, these are because you you and I both know that oil is eventually going to go up. Oh, yeah. It That's, may take five months, it might take a year, but it's going to go up. So it's going to come back. Yep. So all the billionaires right now, the people that are in the know with, with all the cash, they're pouring money in and buying it everything dirt cheap. And then people are complaining, well, the billionaires just made all this money. Well, yeah, you could have too, but you chose not to. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, I think, I think that's one of the things, anybody that's listening to this, you need to take this as an absolute encouragement from somebody who knows, has been there, understands how this works. This isn't Warren Buffett, who's a billionaire, although Richard's not doing too bad. Um, he's not, he's not one of the, the big billionaire trillionaire guys, but I mean, if he knows it and I know it and I'm not, I'm nowhere near being a, a billionaire, guys, this is the time I should say, ladies and gentlemen, this is the absolute time to be making those kinds of investments. Um, when you say cash flow, because there's going to be some people that don't understand that one, can you okay. can you explain that? Sure, there are stocks that pay dividends. There are bonds that pay dividends. There is real estate property that pays rent every month. Yes. So if I could find a instead of a million dollar property, buy it for seven hundred and fifty grand. I'm just using this for yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then the cash, the rentals are still the same. You're just purchasing those assets which is the rentals at a lower price. Right, 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 right. So it makes total if you're, sense. If you're, again, and, and if you're looking at appreciation, you could take the oil example. Mm. Oil is at 20 something a gallon. It was recently at 50, 100 bucks a gallon. Right, I'm right. Sorry, a barrel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So take it, you know, this stuff is people are going to use, they're going to need gas for their car. They're going to need a, a roof over the head. You know, it's, it's not already, it's, it's already started actually in some states where they're seeing, they're seeing less than $2. Per, yeah, and per gallon, uh, which is and one, of, one of our clients at our direct um, uh, digital marketing agency, 
is a guy who's an attorney and he used to do some stuff in, in the past. We're pivoting back for what he was doing in the past because he made a lot of money doing bankruptcies. Yeah. First, bankruptcies will go up. Yeah. Then bankruptcies will go up and you can buy properties. You can buy cars out of bankruptcy. You can buy assets out of back bankruptcy with, under section 363 of the bankruptcy code and just purchase the assets and the liabilities stay in the bankruptcy. You can That's buy, fun. you can buy these things literally at 10, 15, 20 cents on a dollar. That's those are those are the fun ones. I, yeah, you, thanks for reminding me of that because we used to watch for that kind of stuff when that first came out. As you know, the gurus were talking about buy things out of bankruptcy, and we were watching. And man, you can get away with some good deals. Now, you know what you're looking say, for. I would say get away with it because it sounds like you're taking advantage of somebody. But you know, you're making a good investment. Right. Well, businesses are going to file bankruptcy because they yeah. can't pay their rents, even with the um, the bailout, if you want to call it. That's just putting a Band-Aid on the- Oh, it's a bankruptcy. huge gash. Yeah, it's still a huge gash. Yeah, so, agreed. I mean, it, it's it's a stopgap, a very temporary stopgap. So businesses are going to be, there's going to be a lot of business filings for bankruptcy, a lot of individuals sure. filing for bankruptcy. Sure. And that's why I told him as an attorney, you might want to pivot back to bankruptcy because that's really where the wave is going to go. Yeah, no, I, I happen to agree with that. Um, we, we work with personal injury attorneys that and there's some guys that have already mentioned um, there may be a wave of that coming. So- um, mm -hmm sounds like I need to make some phone calls and start working with a couple of them again. Um, but that's, that's good. So you're in, you're near Venice beach or are you in Venice beach? I'm in Venice beach, a, a half a block from the, from the ocean. From right the now. ocean. Okay. Yeah. Um, and that doesn't include the sandwalk, which is another half block. Well, it's about almost a quarter of a mile. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> it's like, Actually, I think I have my digital picture here. I, that's pretty, that's, to, I was going to say, that's a kind of fair representation. Last time I was at Venice, I was looking for the water and I was like, there's nothing but sand out here. It's like, well, I'm back home. What the hell? <laughs> and you're like in the desert of Las Vegas. Yeah. Yeah. Right. It's just kind of like, mm, I think the only difference is this is really sand. It's not dead sea animals. Anyway, um, you guys have been going through some interesting challenges. Now you and I, we work from home. So the challenges are, you know, minimal at best, but still, what are some of the things that you're seeing out where you're at? Because we're still not in lockdown. We're urged to stay home. We have a kind of kind of a shelter in place order, not really. Um, but you guys just got a note yesterday. Yesterday, so, um, yeah. What, yeah. what happened? Phone, our phones light up like when there's amber alerts and things. Yeah, like yeah, that. we do. We get that too. We're 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 networked with that. So right. So this we got an emergency uh, uh, notice, basically saying it's a stay at home order. It's not oh official. It, it's not like John. Hey, we just you know you should stay at home. It's like no, stay home. Stay indoors. But I, I think the biggest thing that I'm seeing, which is actually really good, um, after the mad rush to the grocery stores for the toilet paper and the, and the paper towels and all that fun stuff, is you know, you got to have, you know, 360 rolls of pa toilet paper last year. Of for course, of course. Yes. Um, so after that kind of wave came out, the, the grocery stores that, as, you know, I lived in Vegas for eight years, so I'm used to 24-7 of everything. Yeah, just, right. Just as are you. Yeah. But now the grocery stores are from 8 to 8, so they have a chance to restock in the night. And at 7 o'clock in the morning, they open an hour early specifically for the senior citizens. Awesome. And when you go in the store, they wipe down your cart, your hands. Um, wow. And the good thing is that there's little marks on the store, on, on the floor of the store, where, you, you know, six feet from each person. So when you're in line, you can't be up against somebody. Awesome. So it forces people um, so for social distancing. And I, I think that's going to be a long-term effect even after this whole thing blows over, people are going to be more aware of um, social distancing, of sanitizing things, which is probably a good thing. I was talking to a friend a few days ago, and I kind of, again, saying history repeats itself, which is why I, I look at the, the Great Recession of 2007, 2009, I'm like, going, hey, we can make money now. Yeah, that's right. If you do certain things. Right. Now, if you look, if you remember back in the past, the 60s and the 70s were the decades of free love. Right. And because of AIDS in the 80s, we now have condoms. So everybody's That's right. safer. Yep. Um, after 9 11, now everybody's safer flying. Yep. And now, with what's going on today with the COVID 19 pandemic, we're more aware of health issues. Yeah. That's you know, almost like body condoms, not just mm -hmm. condoms. Yeah, right. For right. Parts of your body. So um, I think we're more aware. And I think that's good in the long run. It's bad that people obviously are sick and dying. That's yeah, horrible that's, by, by yeah. any means. Yeah, agreed. It's like 9-11, people die. That's horrible by any means. Yeah. But what can we learn from this? So that's why I try to take it. Every Everything that's good in our lives or everything that's bad in our lives, I'm like, what can we learn from this? 
if you're good, it might be out of just luck. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And yeah. could very well be. Yeah. Luck has had a tendency to not repeat itself. So and, you have to look and, at the And it does market. run out. I don't care where right. you're at. It does run out. Right. And, and, and this is why we look at uh, the small businesses nowadays that are dealing with this. Mm -hmm. You know, if you look at the, again, going back to the Great Recession, there are some businesses that were locked in the fetal position and they mm -hmm. pretty much just mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. withered away. Yep. You have to be really active. You have to be on social media. Let's just say if you're a restaurant, mm -hmm. just as an example. Yeah. Um, what's your SEO like, your search engine optimization? Because people easily find your restaurant, not by looking for the name of your restaurant, but for certain keywords like yep. Chinese food yep. or whatever the case may be, your Chinese yep. food and your zip code. Yep. Um, <clears throat> are you optimized for delivery? Are you optimized for carryout? A lot of restaurants got killed. And what about your content? Content is not like, hey, buy this at 50% off and 75% off. That's a sales message. Yeah. You know, if, if you're, let's say, a Chinese restaurant, I'm just using that as an example. Yeah. You know, what kind of recipes that you have are those videos that are fun and engaging where people wouldn't want to share with everybody else. Right. Because everybody wants a viral video or a viral blog post or whatever this, but nobody really wants to make the effort. Right. If you make it fun and engaging doing a recipe, people are going to want to go to you as opposed to the other Chinese restaurant, because right, you just exactly. have personality. And yep. when you're on video, people feel like they know you better. Yeah. People always buy from who they know, like, and trust. Yeah. I get such a kick out of what you just said, because just watching a guy doing that, the walk, yeah. those huge walks, I've seen videos of that. And just because of that, I want to go see the guy cook. And if I happen to be there, I'm probably going to eat. Right. You know, and, and it's not just him cooking per se, his personality. Because anybody can cook, but it's the personality. I mean, you have Emeril Lagasse. He's like, bam. Yeah. Like, it's a personality, yeah. It's a yeah. personality thing. So, yeah. you know, I'm, and I'm just using the Chinese restaurant as an No, example. no, no. It's a, it's a great example because, honestly, they, they, they do have personality when they cook because there's a lot of motion. And if you get them talking, they start laughing while they talk. So it just makes it that much more cool. You're, you're, it's inevitable. You're going to smile. Right. They're, and, they're laughing. You're laughing. It's, it's, it's the right kind of contagion for all uses of terminology, it's the right kind of contagion that you want to put out in your content. It's something that gets people to either smile or think, or it's, it's engaging, like you said earlier. And people are turning to YouTube like crazy, turning to Snapchat, to Instagram, to watch all these video platforms. The question is, why aren't you there putting out content a lot? If your competition is putting out one video a day, you should be putting out 10 videos a day. Right. You know, and right. you're like, well, I can't think of how to do this kind of stuff. Well, it's, it's not that hard. You know, you have, let's just say, a restaurant, you have not just the meals, but what about the ingredients? But well, yep. what does this ingredient do? Yep. And we use this ingredient in this dish and this dish and this dish. Or let's just say if you're a life, if you're a life coach, I'll use that as an example. And then, yep. you know, how yep. come you're not doing live videos where people can, you know, uh, connect with you and you can answer their questions? Yep. You know, yep. you want to, you you this is the perfect opportunity to gain a following. And when things like this breaks, when you have the recession, you, when you have what I call the great reset, I should trademark that. The great reset is a perfect opportunity because things like this, events like this, show flaws in your business strategy, shows flaws in your marketing. Now that you see the flaws, now it's a time to work on it while everybody else is in the fetal position. Bam, you need to get aggressive. So when this thing finally blows over, you're a leader in the marketplace. One of the cool things that I, I always love doing is one of the reasons why I like having you on here is – it doesn't matter what's going on that may be wrong in the world. There's a ton that's going right. And where are you? Where's your eyes? Are your eyes looking at what's not going right? Or are your eyes looking on what's going on that's working? And if, cause, cause that's where, like, it's always said, it's an old cliche, success leaves clues. If you're watching the success, you'll see what's going on. And I think there's still a lot of people that are, I mean, I, I hate to say it, but I, I have, I have, and I'm going to clean my friends list again here shortly. I have friends that are still out there talking politics and talking about uh, talking about uh, you know they're pointing fingers back and forth and I'm I'm neither left nor right I'm down the middle anyway as it is but the idea of it is that you guys are still focused on whose fault is all of this who gives a shit let's get through this and go do something good I mean if there's if there's anything that you can positively affect it's the economy it's your community if you can if you can do anything to serve them in some some small way do what's good and look look where the good is the more we focus on that the easier it will be one to get through this 
two, to find the opportunities like what you're describing right now. And if you guys haven't been listening, he's been telling you exactly how to thrive in the midst of all of this craziness during this great reset. By the way, yes, trademark that. Do it. Um, and and you, have, you have an opportunity that very, very few, because I don't have a huge audience on this, but very, very few are going to, they're, they're going to hear it and hopefully they get it. God. Um, well, I, mean, well, I mean, honestly, we hear lots of things all the time, but how, what percentage actually take action on anything? And that's, and that's, and that's the other part is of the ones that listen to this, how many of you are actually going to go, Oh, that's a good idea. Let me go talk to my broker. Let me go take a look online. Let me go search out what he's talking about. I got friends that are, that, you know, they're, they're developers, real estate guys, dude, they're going nuts right now. They're killing it. They're all like, who's holding off on their construction projects? Everybody in the group. Not me, not me, not me. Oh, construction starts tomorrow. Oh, I got construction has been going on for the last week. I'm like, that's how you're supposed to move. That's how you're supposed to keep And why going. aren't they doing this on social media with videos, with blog posts, with YouTube channels? And some of them are missing this. All, you know, why everybody else is, is in the fetal position, we're actually expanding. And yeah. you, I like to think of this opportunity right now, and that's exactly what this is, is an opportunity, mm -hmm. is like dropping a nuclear bomb on an ant and say, okay, now let's fight. <laughs> you have an opportunity to drop a nuclear bomb on your particular marketplace. Yep. And you just don't want to press the button. Either See, you don't know how to do that or you won't ask for help because of your ego. You don't want to do it because, well, you know, my neighbor might say something or my, my wife or husband or, or, or whoever. They're not paying your bills. Thank you. you know? That's the truth. This is an yeah. opportunity for you to actually become an authority in what you're doing and you're dropping the ball because you're lazy. That's the bottom line. You're lazy. That's what it comes down to. Do the to. work. You're going to get some awesome results. But if you just treat your business like a hobby, it's going to pay you like a hobby, especially during the Great Reset. Yep. 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 And this is this is the one time where action is necessary. And that's I'm glad you brought that up. That can that can transition us right into the next subject, which is talking about leadership in the midst of all of this. And that's really why we've got on this. Um, people out right now are all still in the midst of unsurety and all that kind of stuff. Um, you've already given like three solid nuggets on how to lead by example in the midst of all of this. Um, what would you say? It, like you kind of already did, but I'd like you to expand on it. What would you say to somebody that's getting ready to go fetal? Um, Cause the ones that are fetal probably aren't going to change, but the ones that are on the edge, how do we keep them from doing it? What can we tell them so that they get out there and take action? I point to Tiger Woods. When Tiger Woods was the number one golfer in the world, he had like five or eight coaches. Yeah. One for putting, <clears throat> one for driving, one for greens, one for sand, yep. one for mental, one for physical. And if Tiger Woods had all these coaches helping them, you think that you're so smart and you're too good to ask for help, then that's your own, you're just, you're, you might as well just dig your own financial grave right now because you have an opportunity with what's going on right now to mm -hmm. expand, become an authority. So I guarantee you, if you're not, once, if you do exactly what I'm telling you, your marketplace will look to you as a leader. Yep. Because you're actually taking action. Yep. Non-action never leads to results. I had a problem with my son back in mm -hmm. uh, middle school. Okay. I had a problem turning in his homework. Smart kid, but just Same. Same. Oh lazy. my gosh, same. You know, he was just very, very lazy. Yep. So I told him, I said, if you turn in your work, it's at least a C. If you don't turn in work, it's an automatic F. Yep. And a yep. lot of people, business owners, prefer to take the automatic F instead of, as opposed to turning in their work. And if you're gonna, if your business is gonna go down, if your livelihood is gonna go down, why don't you go down fighting? Yeah. If you don't want to go fight for your for your livelihood, if you don't want to fight for your family, you shouldn't be in business in the first place. True. True. I, and, and one of the one of the, to build on top of that because. I had the same problem uh, and, it, and it was laziness and it was the same, uh, same suggestion I made to him. It's like, look, you can't go through life, not turning shit in. You're going to miss out on so much. You're going to miss out on a ton of opportunities. You're not going to be able to live the life that you want to live simply because you're just, you're just not doing it. And it ain't that hard. It's the difference of, of a thought in your brain causing your muscles to flex in your arm versus sitting back and, being drained of any kind of thoughts at all, which means you're worthless. And that's the one thing that most kids fear is being called worthless. 
So I hate to say I kind of manipulated that one, but I did. Um, and things, things got even, uh, got back to normal, if you will. It, 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 but here, it's the same thing with us as adults, those who are, and I don't care what age you are, whether you're in your tw 20s or up in your 40s, 50s like us, well, 40s, I don't think you're 50 yet. I'll be 55 in a few months. Liar. Anyway, um, <laughs> if, and if you are, damn, what's your secret? Anyway, um, the, he's right, guys. If you're, if you're going to sit there and you're going to wait, you know, we, we used to have this thing about when we, when we went out and doing recruiting in the days when I was back in MLMs, and we said there's three parts to the whole thing. There's the guys that'll do, there's the guys that'll never do, and then you got the Weight Watchers. And that's usually the biggest group that you ever recruit. They get in and they wait and watch. And well, I, I, it's, it's basically the 80-20 rule. 80% 80 of Same. Good are coming from 20% of the people. Same. So instead yep. of focusing on the 80%, focus on the 20%. That's why I really, you know, when we take on clients, we just don't take on anybody. You know, there's some businesses, they, they put a mirror on your nose. It's like going, okay, I see something moving. You're breathing. I'll take it on. <laughs> and the thing is, that could be sometimes worse because oh, I've had clients before in the past, my early days, my um, our digital marketing agency where we would just take clients and we would do things and they would mm. switch it to whatever they feel comfortable with, but it wouldn't work. Right. There's a reason why you bring on professionals uh, because we know what we're doing. Yep. So if you don't want to listen to help, if you don't want to ask for help, you're grave. Feel, you're feel, feel free to let that financial, uh, financial living go right into the grave. That's, yeah, that's, and, and that's on you. Okay, so how's that working out for you? Yeah. Right. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> You're going to be in the fetal position during the best opportunity that you're probably going to see in your lifetime where you can make so much more money yep. and, and just become an authority in the marketplace. Yep. So how's that working out for you, that fetal position? We were just talking about that yesterday. I did, a, I did an interview with uh, Mark Willis, who's a certified financial planner out of the Midwest. And we were just talking about this, you know, how, how you should be in the midst of all of this craziness, what you should be looking at, what kind of investments, where are you going to find your best returns, blah, blah, blah. Um, and, and this is why I'm doing this because like right now, I'm not hearing this kind of talk. I'm still hearing the, their fault, their fault. This is wrong. That's bad. This is horrible. I, guys, no, it's not. Yes, it's serious. The coronavirus is serious. There is no doubt in anybody's mind that this damn thing could do some damage. But, oh, oh, and I wanted to introduce this thought to you too. This was brought up by Kim from Canada. Um, and I did a live on this on uh, another app uh, where she, she actually talked about the term social distancing and that she had a problem with that term. And I yeah. thought about it for a minute, and I have a problem with that term too. Um, whoever coined it, I get it. Their intention was probably correct. However, if you think about the term social distancing, you're asking everybody to not do what you and I are doing. You're asking everybody to stay completely disconnected. As humankind, we can't. That's just not how we're built. Physical distancing, however, yeah. which is what I'm going to be using in all my posts, I absolutely agree with. You, you, I mean, the stores where you're at, you mentioned that there's marks distancing six feet, uh, six feet for people, which is fine. We, we, need to, we need to practice that for now. We need to be healthy, healthy minded. We need to know that, that, yeah, you need to wash your hands. You know, you need to stay, because there were days where people just didn't. Now, now as being a, another male, you and I have both seen it at restaurants, people that are in the bathroom and they oh. just walk right out without washing their hands. You know, um, <laughs> yes, guys do that. And I'm, I, I look at it, I'm like, oh, you're just disgusting. Yeah, dude, it's like, um, that's another region. And if your hand was down there, you know, that's just, yeah, you need to wash, dude. Pretty simple. It's not hard. Um, my, my point to, the, to all of that is, though, Physical distancing is the hashtag I honestly want to push. And, and I'm asking everybody if they wouldn't mind joining me on that because that makes a hell of a lot more sense than social distancing. I think social distancing is a little extreme. Um, and I'm not trying to be a social justice warrior on that, but uh, I have a lot of friends that I'm in touch with on live apps, on phone, on whatever. I'm not stopping talking to those people because that's actually what they're in inferring when they say that. I get it. I get what it's for. But I honestly think physical distancing is probably a better term. Your thoughts? I got this virtual background at this time. It's starting to annoy me. Uh, um, yeah, in my better. So um, what I was, uh, in, in going back to what you were talking about, uh, the people with the politicizing everything. Yeah. By nature, social media is narcissistic in nature. Oh, okay? my gosh. Yeah. And, and people, <laughs> people want to talk 
and it's a noise, but the question is, what value does it bring? Yeah. Now, I understand your need to vent. Not everybody wants to hear your venting, whether you think you're right or other people think you're wrong. It, it doesn't really matter. It's just venting. Yeah. Um, but, the, but the point is, what difference is it going to make? Yeah. Chances are not, because we're this country nowadays in America, it's either you're on this side or this side. Okay. And most of us are here in the middle. Yeah. And we don't hear these things. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yep. And, but it's, again, it's narcissistic. It's people want to feel like their voice is heard. They want to feel important and this and that. And I don't care who you are. You're just part of the noise at this point. I, 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 you know, what we need to be is part of the solution, not the noise. Yep. And instead of complaining <clears throat> about something, give me a solution. Instead of complaining that they don't like this person in politics or this person in office, regardless of what side of the aisle you are, great. That, that's all fine. If you say, well, Trump should have predicted this months ago. Well, if you're a leader, and actually I point to George W. Bush when it comes to this. And yep. I'm not, I'm not making no political messages whatsoever. Uh, when he heard that the, that the planes flew in to the buildings during 9-11, yep. he could have rushed out of there. Yep. But like what he said afterwards, he said a leader needs to be calm. Yep. And to reassure people. Because if you have a hair on fire approach to leadership. Oh, no, not good. No, not good. And, and, and that's actually going to filter down. Yeah. So whether he waited too long or not long enough, that's not for me to say. It's, I don't know. Yeah, there's um, still a lot that's not known about how this all went down. And that's right. one of the reasons and, why and, I don't want to hear it. That acted before us or countries that didn't, that, that waited later. You know, yeah. when's the perfect time? Do you, do you cry wolf sometimes? I'm not saying that this is wolf, but do you cry wolf and, 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 just, and just, you know, put more fear in the public right from the get-go? Or try to calm people. Not, I'm not saying, you know, Trump's a very calming influence by some of his tweets. <laughs> but, um, no, he's not actually. I'll, tell, I'll agree with you. Well, I, know, I know he, he was off as he wanted to stir the pot. I mean, and I totally he, he, he he does, yeah, he some, some days I wonder what his thinking is when he does that, but I, I get it. Yeah, I, I agree. Yeah, I, I think, but the bottom line is people want to be heard. Yeah. And if you're going to complain about something, whether it's politics or something else, give us a solution, a reasonable solution. Now, and that, that's something that even when I was a, a manager, that was always my mantra. I get that you're not digging something. All right. How do, we fi how do we fix it? Because I might not see it. And although I'm creative, you may have already brought up the solution. Don't come to me until you have one. Until then, it's process as usual because the process does work. You know, you know you in, in, in LA, well, in every major city, but especially in, L in LA right now, there's a huge homeless population. Yeah. And people complain about the homeless. But and then I said, that's great. I, I agree with you. How do we solve this? No, no idea. Yeah, no idea. idea. I mean, I'm actually in the process of forming a nonprofit to help with that kind of stuff. But um, one, well, there was the community. one one uh, solution that has actually been enacted, and I can't remember where. I just saw it online, so I'll have to find the link. But they've built a mini home town for the homeless. I can't remember what city that is. Maybe you saw it, but they they literally built mini houses for them. Good. So oh, yeah, a, I, I saw that in, in the news um, actually before the last winter season. Yes, and, and it was it's like a little community for the homeless to actually have a place. They're not in boxes. They're not they got a little place to live. Now there is a place in Las Vegas. Um, it's a veterans charity, mm -hmm. and what they're doing, I mean, they basically purchase a hotel, a motel, and they just switch it all to to veterans quarters. But now they're also taking these containers, shipping containers. Yes, you no know, container park out there in Las yeah, Vegas. Yeah, 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 yeah. They're yeah, taking yeah. The containers and turning them into little studios. See, now that's awesome too. Cause that's, that's living one container. You guys is actually a lot of room. That's a good, that's a good personal space for a vet who's homeless and has to live out on the street. That's a great idea. Do you know which one that is? I'd like to go see if maybe I can't support I them. I think it's somewhere. veterans village. I think. Don't quote yes. Me. I know that name. Yes. I know that name. Okay. I, I, I know. Yeah. I'll get a hold of them. Veterans village. Okay. But here again, leading through a pandemic, how are you leading? What are you doing to bring a solution? To the problem while we can't bring healthcare solutions to the problem we can bring other solutions to the problem and and we've talked about now how to get yourself in position to reset how to be able to to get your own life and mind in order how to help lead by doing things that will help with other solutions to problems that have been long-term existent 
and still be able to thrive in the midst of all of what's going on, whether you're in lockdown or not. You know, it, lockdown shouldn't be a life debilitator. It should be an enabler in all, in all honesty, because now you've got more, you got more time to think. It's a perfect opportunity for businesses. Yeah. Perfect opportunity because you have downtime. So why can't you be creative and get con make content? If you don't know how to be creative, hire somebody that is. I don't care if it's a digital marketing agency. I don't care if it's an eighth grader. I don't care what it is, but you need to be creative. You need to have a personality. Your, your brand needs to have a voice. You want to, if you're a restaurant, be your old Emerald Lagasse. If you're a, a hairdresser, you know, you, you make different cuts or, or, or what you do, you find people with haircuts that are on YouTube and you comment on them. Yep. If you're a stylist, you find somebody in the Golden Globes of the Oscars and say, hey, this was good because of this and this was bad because of this. You, this is a perfect opportunity to create your own brand. You just can't be lazy. I think, and I think most people are so, they're still stuck in the mentality of woe is me. This is, that's why we're doing this. And, that, and it, I, like I said, I got three today. You're number two. I got one more this afternoon. I got another one tomorrow. I got two more on Monday. I got, all I wanted to do was give everybody the perspective from different people in different professions and to show that these people, even in the midst, one's, uh, two of them are healthcare workers. One's a social um, counselor up in Seattle. And the other one's a healthcare worker back in the Midwest. And she just found out that her whole, her hospital, there's a, a handful of people that have been infected with the coronavirus somehow. Uh, and she still has to go back to work. Um, so it's like, I'm, I get her perspective on Monday. That's going to be an interesting conversation. Um, but even in the midst of all of that, it's, there's a no fail attitude here. We still have to go. Well, we have, we have too much, we have too much to do to worry about the bad side of this. Let's focus on where we're headed. You brought up a very good word, and that's perspective. Now, I'm not saying I'm right or somebody else is right or this or this. My perspective is based on my businesses and my past life experiences. Not past life. That actually sounds too uh, warm and fuzzy. They but should know what you mean by now. Goodness. My life, my life experience at this point has brought me to my perspective to where it is today. Yeah. I'm not saying that I'm right. I'm not saying it's for you. But I also know that history repeats itself. And what I do... I'm more of a sociologist, I guess. I yeah. look, I study people, groups yep. of people, the public, yep. during yep. certain periods of time in history. And I said, I mean, back in the Great Recession, we had um, WhatsApp started, Vimeo started, yeah. yep. you know, Airbnb started yep. Yep. You know, during the Great Recession. So don't tell me that this is a bad time to do anything. If you have a dream business, you should still do your dream business. However, don't just sit back you need to be active, you need to take action, and you need to put value in the marketplace. There was an old saying that says, you're paid to the penny based on your value in the marketplace. Yep, yep. So and when you create more value, you create more money. When you ask the universe for what it is that you need to be paid, it will pay you exactly what you ask for by the amount of effort that you put out to get it. Now, so I understand the whole law of attraction stuff, woo woo, you know, I'm going to manifest, you know, and a BMW is going to drop out of the sky in my lap, but from all in my front yard, but it, that could be from an airplane and when it crashes in your front yard, it could be smithereens, but you got your BMW, right? Yeah, that's right. That's right. So, I mean, you need to take action. You really do. You have to take massive inspired action because if you don't, if your why isn't important enough, the action, will, you'll just fail. Yeah. You're, and you'll, you'll, you'll it, yeah. Right. Yeah. Guys, that's, that's, again, it's one of the reasons why I like talking with Richard because he's got that kind of perspective that I, that I enjoy and respect. Um, this is the kind of thinking that I have too. It's basic. It's, it's, to me, it's basic, but it's because our life experience, his and mine, have both brought us to this kind of perspective where we look at things from the standpoint of, you know what, anything's possible, but how do we get there? And I, I really don't care who's in office. I don't care about the economy. Doesn't matter. I don't Doesn't care matter. about the economy. If the dollar does this, you end up yep. doing prayers on Mars. Your perspective is important, and the only thing, the only thing you have complete control of your life is your thoughts. Thank you. Okay, and you can be positive about it, or and productive, or you can be negative and self defeating. The choice is completely up to you. Well, I'm positive. My my hair is okay, you know, but I, I need to I need to work on that. Like Richard's it got better hair than I do. Four weeks, five weeks worth of growth. Um, this is two years and it still hasn't helped. So, you know, we're, we're working on it though. It's, it's getting there. <laughs> we'll to leave here, you know, <laughs> that's true. It is. I, you know what? That's threw me off when we, when we had the 29th and I, I thought we were already in March and it's like, no, no, it's still February. 
It's so this funny because um, every single uh, every single year, um, right around shortly after Valentine's Day, I'll post uh -huh. something saying, uh -huh. "Okay, I'm finally breaking down. I'm going to get married." And please circle the date on your calendar, February February thirtieth. And people are like, "Congratulations!" I'm like, "Look at the calendar." Yeah. <laughs> that's awesome that's awesome okay guys so i want to wrap this up final thoughts um <clears throat> and and really summarizing what we've been talking about there's a huge opportunity right now for anybody who's willing to take action there's a huge potential for people to set themselves up to do well obviously it needs to come with a plan that's workable and that makes sense um you do need to know that you you Right now, starting a restaurant might not be the best idea. However, that doesn't mean that it's not a good idea. It just means it might not be the right time. So what can you do now in the meantime to go ahead and set yourself up so when that opportune time opens that you're ready to go? Because you don't want to be behind the curve. You want to be set to open doors the day that the curve is presenting itself. It's the same like surfing. There's always a wave. You don't paddle when you're in the middle of the wave. You paddle long before the wave gets to you so you can build up some speed. If you need guys like Richard to help you, um, well, Richard's a hard guy to get because it, there's some serious requirements to work with him, and rightfully so. He, he knows his shit inside out. If you want somebody like that, you need to be looking. You need to find somebody. If you can't afford people like him and myself, there's other places. There's Upwork. There's Fiverr. Just realize the amount of work you put in will get you a result. Make sure it's the right kind of work. Make sure you put in the right kind of time. And, and let your head think. A lot of people are still being affected by other um, sources of information and it's not necessarily presenting the right stuff to you. You know, don't let things affect your thinking. Don't let things affect your mood, affect your own self. Take your own perspective to a higher level. Rich, any last thoughts? You pretty much, <laughs> did you read my script? And that's exactly <laughs> what I was going to say. Uh, no, I, I think, I think, this is a perfect opportunity, and I always stress the word opportunity, to get a great return on investment, whether mm. you're investing in performing assets Absolutely. that are slightly depressed, whether you're investing in yourself, because if you're not investing in your business, if you're not investing in your own personal growth, I mean, there are a lot of people that are out of a job right now. What are you doing? Well, I don't know how to do that much. Well, there's Code Academy. Mm -hmm. There's Free Code Camp if you want to learn how mm -hmm. to code and make under $50,000 a year as a coder working for companies like Google or, you know, companies like my company. And, and there are plenty of other companies that are looking sure. for top quality people. Yep. So invest in yourself, look at your ROI. Mm -hmm. And it's the perfect opportunity. While everybody else is in the fetal position, you can expand. Yep. And if you're going to go, and if you're, and if you're going to have, if your business is going to go down, why not go down fighting as opposed to being timid? Yeah. If you, it, the, the only, the only ones who were ever called champions were the ones who died fighting. Right. And, and if everybody else is in the fetal position and you're actually taking action and doing some great things, when we come out of this, who do you think is going to be the leader? Who do you think people are going to hire? Who do you yep. think people are going to order from? Yep. You're going to order from the people they know and <clears throat> they trust. Yep. That's what it's always been about. All right, guys. Well, that's it. Rich, thanks so much for hanging out with me again, brother. It's been a while. Um, I think we cut about 40, 45 minutes, which is perfect. So if you guys have any questions, um, Rich, what's your what's your Twitter handle? Maybe somebody can- All over social in. media, I'm at the Mr. Blueprint. P-H-E-M-R Blueprint. The Mr. Blueprint. And he's not kidding. He really is the Mr. Blueprint. Uh, the man knows how to blueprint a business from scratch. So if you got an idea and you really want to take it to a heavy level, this is the man you want to talk to. I should go this way. I keep forgetting I'm in the universe. I nod my head in that direction. Uh, and it, by all means, search him out, watch what he posts. He posts all kinds of good stuff. I, I don't know why I'm not seeing you, dude. I got to go find out what the heck's going on with my Facebook feed. Um, Clearly, Facebook has the coronavirus, and that's why you can't find me. I, I would agree. Anyway, um, so love you guys. Thanks for listening to the Java Chat. We got more stuff coming. Um, do take care of yourself. Take care of each other. Stay healthy. Stay safe. Wash your hands. Keep your hands away from your face. And, and, you know, just be present and be loving. That's really all that matters. All right. Thanks, everybody. Love you. Talk to you soon. Ciao for now.